objects in Warhammer are a mean, sturdy, stubborn, and short race. With the dwarves you get gunpowder, metal, iron, axes, and epic beards. The dwarves main stay units are infantry units. Uh, in fact, they don't have any units that can be classified as cavalry. They have the dwarf warriors and the longbeards and special rules apply to these to reflect the uh, just as there are special rules that apply to almost every race in Warhammer to reflect their racial characteristics. The dwarves have very high leadership. They're not likely to run from the enemy. They are slow, they have short legs, they are relentless, and at the beginning of each battle you roll a dice to see how much your dwarves hate the particular enemy you're fighting. Now they will always hate greenskins, but your general might hate a specific enemy character, your, or your entire army if you're lucky, your entire army can end up hating the entire enemy army, and in Warhammer hating someone is a very good thing. So we have the lowly dwarf warriors, more than a match for other infantry of comparable price in Warhammer. Then we have the longbeards, better geared, better beards, just overall better and sturdier. The dwarves also are good at both, they're good at both charging and at defense uniquely. Because they lack mobility, they are very hard to shift once, once charged, and if they manage to charge with their short little legs, they do hit hard. At range, the dwarves do not have the luxury of drawing long, beautifully crafted longbows. They opt instead for gunpowder and crossbows, mechanical things. So, the dwarf thunderers can lay down a lot of leaden bullets towards the enemy. Short to penetrate armor, very dangerous, longer range on the crossbows. The elite dwarves are hammers. Uh, the hammers are wielding two, those are the guys you can see to the left here, they are wielding two-handed war hammers and there are also iron breakers and just judging by the name you can probably surmise that these guys are not units you want to be facing in melee. They can be d uh, designated as tar pit units which are units that it's going to be extremely hard to kill them, it's going to be extremely hard to break them, and you're going to take a lot of casualties in the process. So the theme of sturdy dwarfs with very good close combat capabilities remains in the elite dwarfs, but are even more accentuated. Then we have the dwarven slayers, and these furry little creatures have taken a slayer oath to seek death in battle because they have brought shame upon themselves or for some other reason. Uh, some of the most known slayers, the Slayer King himself and Gotrek Gurnison of the Gotrek and Felix novels, they seek glorious death in battle against the enemies of the dwarves. There are troll slayers, demon slayers and slayers who just slay. Now, in contrast to other dwarves, they don't wear armor. They go to the battlefield naked, but they won't run from a good fight, and they hit hard when they hit, but they die easily to missiles. Then we have things that go boom, and there are some things I'm not going to mention here, like ballista and rock throwers. You have dwarven cannons, you have a gyrocopter, a helicopter, that uh, steam-powered helicopter, that can throw bombs and shoot steam. Then you have the dwarven, uh, dwarven organ gun, um, gun that shoots multiple projectiles and hits hard. The special thing about the dwarven uh, the dwarven um, artillery is that they can have runes on their artillery and the dwarves will tell you that they do not use magic but they use magical runes instead because they don't really trust magic. They are an earthy folk closely tied to the mountains and they trust in runes. So runes can be placed upon these upon these artillery pieces to make them more effective in battle. Then we have the Watt category, and one of the Watt category units, the Iron Drakes. These guys fire torpedo, missile, chain, burning things. They wear insanely heavy armor. They are on, almost immune to attacks of flaming nature. And if you want to kill some demons, chaos warriors, 
um, if you want to kill dragons, these are the guys you want to do it. They can fire those torpedoes, do a lot of damage, and they won't easily get scorched inside their thick suits of armor either. You can even see they have pictures of dragons on their banner there. Uh, then we have the Anvil of Doom. And the Anvil of Doom is an anvil that a dwarf can strike with a hammer and let's be let's be honest here it it gives it gives magical effects to either the dwarfs or devastating magic against the enemy earth shakes general nastiness then we have things that go boom too and they don't necessarily go boom but we have a gyrocopter bomber or bomber or the gyro bomber so you can say that the dwarven cavalry is the helicopter they also have a flame cannon, which is supremely useful when you want to deal with huge numbers of enemy troops like undead or orcs and goblins. They can scorch a lot of things. And the gyrocopter as well, good for making strafing runs and bombing. Hope these things will be in the game, since the dwarves are one of the confirmed playable races. And in keeping with the character of the dwarves, they will never forget a slight towards their race, their family, their mother or themselves. They are obsessed with honor, keeping their word, and people who are seen by the dwarves as behaving dishonorably, not keeping their word, word that will be kept in the Dwarven Book of Grudges. And it will be remembered for all time. And the Book of Grudges keeps growing and keeps growing, and it makes it very hard for the dwarves to keep diplomatic relations with their neighbors. So dwarves and elves, not the best friends. Dwarves and humans do quite a bit of trade, but they are not the best of friends either, and of course dwarfs and greenskins hate each other with the intensity of a thousand dragon breaths. So with the dwarfs you get sturdy infantry, you get superior war machines, and that's about it really. So what you want to do with the dwarfs is you want to use your superior range to make the enemy come to you, and if the enemy is foolish enough to move into range of one of your dwarven regiments, can be pretty sure that unless you're uh, facing some seriously nasty shit that those dwarves are going to be able to prevail and grind down the enemy strength and honor